Hello, it's Kathy Cassidy and this is Sunday Book Club. And um, yeah, I thought I would start off today by introducing you or reintroducing you to this little character who starred a couple of weeks ago in my um, I'm Not Very Well video. Um, and a couple of people, a couple of people asked me about about this little creature and you know why why and what and who so i thought i would tell you a little bit about him this is squabbit and squabbit is um obviously an old and much loved soft toy handmade definitely um that was found in a junk shop a charity shop back when my children were really little i think they were toddlers you know two and three maybe and we got Squabbit, we just, I, I love rescuing old toys, which you might have noticed. Um, Squabbit really is quite moth-eaten now. But in the olden days, before my kids managed to get their hands on him, he had a very fine curly tail. And we thought that he was probably a squirrel, but then we weren't too sure perhaps he was actually a rabbit. And that's how he came to be called Squabbit. So uh, Squabbit had to do a bit of a stand-in for me when I wasn't very well a couple of weeks ago um, and he's a much better actor than I am so I thought you know he can have his little moment of fame and uh, yeah so I had some some hellos some shout outs to do today and there are a few schools that I wanted to mention one is Our Lady of Walsingham in Merseyside again um, who I know some of you are listening along and Pinkwell Primary in Hayes again, and a new school, Troll Primary in Somerset. So hi to all of you. And to the lovely Greycoat School in London. I visited Greycoat once, oh, I don't know, easily five or six years ago. Um, but I, I believe that they're very keen readers of my books and it was so lovely to hear that. And uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying Sunday Book Club too, Greycoat. So also I did promise last week I would do a thank you to those who sent me get well wishes and um, I probably haven't got everybody here but it did include Lucy and Jade and Helen and Lily Lost, Wajiha, um, Ella, Gracie Pop, Sophie, Francesca, Aleka, Analia and more. So thank you to all of you. I wanted as well to say a special um, hi and stay strong to some of my French readers. I know most of the people watching Sunday Book Club are um, going to be English speaking, but there are some of my French readers who are watching and as, as a way maybe to improve their, their English. And um, I know some of those who've contacted me in the last couple of days include Anne Wynne, who has just bought her copy of Cœur Canel, the new French um, comic book and of Phoenix Melody which is um, the new novel out in France so um, oh I've got the wrong one but this is Cœur Noisette the, the last but one um, of the of the uh, comic books and she's got the one after this and Phoenix Melody which just arrived through the post for me today so that's really nice for me to be able to see how different um, the book looks here in or in in France compared to the UK version so yeah um but this is forever phoenix but in french it's phoenix melody so it was lovely anwin to see your uh, to see your picture with your you know holding the books and it's lovely to see you on sunday book club and also a special hello to iliana who also bought the comic book her canal um so hi iliana i hope you're enjoying it and to Marilyn and her daughter Heloise, um, who let me know that France is now in a second national lockdown. So I wanted to send much love and big hugs to all my fantastic French readers. You are so loyal and so enthusiastic and so gorgeous. And I am sorry that you're in lockdown again. But as you know, here in Wales, we are too. So we're all in it together. Let's see if books can help to get us through. So... Um, almost there, a couple more hellos to new subscriber Tom, whose lovely comments really cheered me up last week. And to another new subscriber, Laughter Girl, who commented that Driftwood was her very favourite book growing up. But once her cat came in wet, all wet and fell asleep on the cover and ruined it, 
um, although the inside was still all right. And that story really, really made me laugh. Um, and it kind of leads me, I did promise I would tell you a little bit about the inspirations for Driftwood um, before before moving on to different subjects. So you've heard the, the first chapter last week and I'll tell you a little bit about the inspiration for the story now and hopefully you will maybe decide that this could be a book that you would read through through lockdown or through tier two or tier three or if you're really lucky still in tier one, who knows. But, um, you know, get your hands on a copy of this and you might really enjoy it. So, yeah, where did the inspirations for Driftwood come from? If you if you remember when I was reading the story last week and you can easily go back to Sunday Book Club and listen to it again if you've forgotten. Um, it's about Hannah and her brother Kit and Hannah's best friend, Joey Donovan. And there is a lot of um, all through the book, there's a little bit of, of kind of tension between Hannah and her brother because um, Kit thinks that he's cooler than cool and Hannah is quite shy. And those characters a little, little bit are based upon my kids when they were teenagers, young teens, because they're very, very close together in age, just 17 months apart. And they were just so, so close growing up. They, they did everything together. They had the same friends. They did the same, same interests, did all the same things. And then suddenly when they hit 12 and 13, everything changed. And suddenly my son didn't really want much to do with his little sister anymore. He was just, you know, just didn't want her tagging along. And that really hurt her, I think. And then even worse, even worse, he began to uh, go out with some of her friends. So imagine, imagine if your best friend is going out with your brother, not good. And that's something that happens to Hannah in the story in Driftwood. And it's something that happened to my daughter more than once all the way through her teens. I think he must have gone out with two or three of her uh, very best friends. So that was a kind of tricky thing. And he also had this habit. I hope he's not watching this because he'll kill me if he is. But um, he hit the age of 12 or 13 and then he would just um, he, he would get a, a tin of Lynx body spray. This is so bad for the ozone layer. Coco would definitely disapprove. And he would just spray it all over him, thinking that it would make him irresistible to girls. And that's something that Kit does in Driftwood, too. So, yeah. Then there is the cats in the dustbin bit of the chapter. Just right at the end, Hannah and Joey find three little kittens in a dustbin on the school grounds. And that, those, those kittens are inspired by three kittens that we had when I was writing this story. We'd, we'd not long adopted three feral kittens and our kittens were called Pepper and Pickle and Lily. And sadly, um, the last remaining one of the trio, Pepper, he died last year just before we moved house so um that was very sad but i don't think don't think he was really up for another move so they they had a fantastic life roaming the scottish countryside and then um roaming through the parks of merseyside a little bit later on but um in the story i decided that the cats would be called itchy scratchy and crusty their names taken from the simpsons tv program which is um, a favorite of hannah and joey but it's the actual story of um, why, why did I include kittens in a dustbin in that story? And it's, it's um, in, in the chapter that follows, in chapter two, which obviously I didn't read you, Hannah and Joey take the kittens to their art teacher and she hides them in, in the art stock cupboard all the way through the day. And then the girls take them home at the end of the day. And that is almost completely lifted from something that happened when I was a high school art teacher too. And um, I would go into my art room first thing in the morning and I would sit and set everything up through the day and I'd have a coffee and plan everything and, you know, get everything prepared. And this particular morning, um, a, a bunch of about three girls came running into the classroom well before registration shouting, Miss, Miss, you've got to help. There's a dying pig on the field. And I'm like, what? How is there a dying pig? You know, this was this was a comprehensive school in Coventry. And I wasn't really sure that, you know, how could a pig have got there? But like a fool, off I went, followed them down the school playing fields 
and there in the distance was this really sad looking little creature just lying, lying on the grass, looked as though it was about to draw its last breath. And we went and scooped it up and it wasn't a pig, it was a Yorkshire Terrier. And um, I put it in a box and I hid it in the art room stock cupboard because I wasn't sure what the head teacher would think about this, maybe wouldn't really approve of having a dog in school, but it wasn't very well. Um, and I was I was feeding it bits of bits of warm milk and um, you know I sent uh, I went across to to the shop across from school and managed to get some dog food and we were trying really hard to to look after it keep it warm and in the story it's Hannah and Joey who take the three kittens home but in real life it was me um, who took the Yorkshire Terrier home and it was a Friday. And we kept it all weekend. We reported it missing, but nobody claimed it. Um, phoned around all the vets. Nobody nobody wanted anything to do with it. And then um, by the end of the weekend, it had managed to eat most of my living room. It literally ate, it ate bits of the sofa. It ate, it ate almost the whole raffia dust, dustbin, waste, waste paper basket. You know, it was a, a real menace. I was like, please, somebody claim this, claim this little dog. And then on the Monday, somebody did. And it, it went back to its rightful owner. And I think they probably just wanted a weekend off because it was such a naughty little dog. But it was probably quite scared as well. So that was the story of um, where the found creature came from and some, from something that, that actually happened to me as, as when I was an art teacher. And sometimes it is those real life things that happen to you and really stick in your memory. And even though, you know, you're not always aware of it at the time, but sometimes those things sneak their way into a story. And I love how that happens. It's like you're unconscious trawling around and coming up with something, just the right thing that's gonna fit with your story. So that's where the story of the kittens came from. And there is so, so much else in Driftwood. I mean, part of part of the inspiration was um, a song called Driftwood um, about somebody who, who was kind of feeling unwanted and lost. And that also is a theme that runs through the story. And I also used to walk, um, walk our dog I had a, a, a lurcher back then my daughter would do ballet lessons in air and while she was dancing I would walk my dog along the beach in air and sometimes you'd see little very cool little patterns of things on the beach where kids had made you know you maybe a feather and a pattern of shells around it or some really nice little pebbles um, and I used to think it was like a kind of beach magic and in the story um, I have a character, Paul, who makes beach magic, little offerings on the beach um, that he thinks will help make his life go better. So all of those little threads of inspiration and ideas are went together and have been woven together to form this book. And I really, really hope you would enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's also about being brave enough to challenge um, the rules sometimes if you feel the rules are unfair. And Joey is definitely somebody who challenges the school uniform rules. That's something my daughter used to do as well. But lots, I think, that you would enjoy. Next week, I think that I'm going to have a different kind of book club and recommend some books to you. These ones, I think, are going to mostly be children's books. They're very powerful, important books. Um, and ones I think really well worth reading. Um, but for all of you who are struggling with new tier levels of restrictions, or if you're actually in a lockdown, um, whether you're in France, whether you're in Wales, in Scotland or anywhere else, stay strong, keep smiling. Remember that this is not going to last forever. And let's all get our own ways again of um, making it making it go faster, and trying to look on the bright side. So again, um, I haven't been very good at gathering together all your suggestions for being positive, but let's, let's have a look at that as well next week. Take care and I will see you then. Keep smiling. See you next week on Sunday Book Club.